Welcome to another episode of BRC TV. After what has been a week of uncertainty here in Brisbane, fortunately, the good news came through on Thursday morning that the lockdown is over and we can look forward to some terrific racing here in Brisbane over the weekend. Eagle Farm on Saturday and Doombin on Monday and fortunately, patrons are welcome on course. On today's show, we profile Melody Bell, the Kiwi champ who looks set to round out her stellar career here in Brisbane. We speak with Black Soil Bloodstock's Brian Seamson and talk about that celebration following Isotope's Derby Munro Stakes win in Sydney last Saturday. We speak to Brisbane Racing Club Chief Executive Tony Partridge about the club's big plans for this year's carnival. And as usual, we'll try and find you a few winners for the Easter weekend when Bart Sinclair drops by. But to kickstart today's program, let's look back at the Tony Gollan trained isotope announcing her arrival to the Southerners on Slipper Day in Sydney last week. Odeon lays it down to Bella Nipotina. Isotope going to third. Will it be too late? She's coming hard. Odeon in front. Isotope's charging home down the outside and she got up. Isotope, the Queenslander, knocked off Odeon right on the post. Well, there she is, Isotope, the pride of Queensland at the moment, winning first up in Sydney on Saturday and... Uh, no one cheered her home harder than uh, Brian Seamson, our, our guest. Thanks for joining us, Brian. That's uh, perfectly okay, mate. Uh, it was it was watching a race with a bit of dif bit of a difference for you, wasn't it? You had a, a roller coaster of emotions, I suppose, last weekend. Yeah, certainly. I was just up in Toowoomba for Harry McAlpine's wedding. Uh, obviously, my partner in Black Soil Bloodstock, and uh, my nan passed away during the week, so we had a funeral and a wedding on the same day. It was my birthday on the Saturday, and Isotope, uh, she gave us a nice. Uh, she gave us a nice uh, birthday present. I dare say there might have been a bit of pent up emotion uh, going into that as, as the footage should have somewhat shows. Yeah, we certainly saw that footage on, on Saturday afternoon, but it was terrific. And um, the filly herself, from, from where you were in January, obviously so much disappointment in what happened there on Magic Millions Day. To see her winning first up, that obviously meant a lot to everyone in, involved with her. Oh, certainly. I mean, you know, we just want to just set and forget uh, what happened in January. Um, you know, you, you, you never get um, too many chances at races like that. And um, but uh, to go to Sydney and you know and fly the fly the colours in Sydney for the first time and go one from one, it's uh, has been a long time since I went in Sydney on uh, Temple of Boom in the Galaxy a long while ago. So uh, it was really nice to get the colours down there and see what she did. Yeah, a bit of water uh, under yeah. the bridge since Temple. I, oh, I, oh yeah, absolutely. I, I suspect she'll. Uh, I suspect that everyone who saw her might have thought she might have had a better turn of foot. Um, but as she saw that gap and. And she beat uh, she beat another Group One horse there, and let's not forget she beat away game in, in crazy style up there at the Gold Coast, and then she came and beat a quality Group One horse there as well. So we're we're pretty excited for what what uh, lies ahead for her. Joined by Tony Partridge, Chief Executive of the Brisbane Racing Club. Tony, we've been hearing a lot about Stradbroke season, which begins in just over a month, or May May one to be exact. What is Stradbroke season? Stradbroke season is the Brisbane leg of the Tab Queensland Winter Carnival. It's the name we came up with out of necessity last year when we couldn't call it a carnival and there was reduced prize money and, and we lost a few races. But we love the name. We think it describes the time of year in Brisbane beautifully. It's not necessarily winter when we have most of our races. They're actually May and June's not really winter anyway. It's 23 <laughs> degrees and sunny in Brisbane. So we came up with a name that heroes our most famous Group 1 race and describes Brisbane at that time of year. And May, June is a terrific time to be in Brisbane. Yeah, we're very happy that uh, Stradbroke season might describe Brisbane in May and June, and it's a great time to be in Brisbane. There's always sport on, there's usually a rugby test, state of origin, but there's lots of arts, whether it's the symphony, the ballet, the orchestra, and it's just a beautiful time to visit Brisbane. Brisbane hotels have been doing it tough. I think we're second only to Cairns in terms of low occupancy. So we want to support the businesses in Queensland promote Stradbroke season and also promote what you can do in Brisbane at that time. Yeah, well hopefully we look forward to that over the next month. We've just come through a really difficult week for Brisbane people with the, with the lockdown, but we've heard some good news on Thursday morning. So what does that mean for racing in Brisbane over the Easter weekend? It means we can race tomorrow with patrons, so please come to the races. Of course, be responsible. You do need to be seated for the next two weeks, but our staff will make sure that you check in properly. There's hand sanitizer. We take all measures that we have been for the last 12 months and you should have a great day and enjoy the outdoors. And you've got Eagle Farm on Saturday and Doom it on Monday. We do, so it's uh, an Easter, Easter weekend for racing fans. Maybe those who've had to cancel holidays elsewhere should come to the track. 
tough week for you and your generation being in the, in the vulnerable uh, elderly group? I've been vaccinated, no reaction whatsoever. I'm disappointed they've uh, not uh, made masks compulsory because <laughs> it improved your look. So in fact, I've got a hundred here I'll give you if you'll slip a mask yeah, on. Yeah. It makes it much easier to work with it. All right, let's find a winner for the, for the punters. Where, where are we going? I thought race four, East Asia. I like her okay. Sydney form compared to the opposition here. First run for the Rob Heathcote stable. Got a good draw, Luke Dittman to ride. I think out of best, she might, she might want a little bit further than 1,200, but I've been encouraged, it's been good early money for her. Yeah, she's really good early money for her. Another one? He's wearing a bit thin with Got A Kiss, but I think mm. the one alley is a big asset. For the, uh, it's a small field, it, it might be uh, drawing a long bow to say the one barrier is a huge advantage, mm. but it might just let it tack on a, a length or two closer. One more chance, I'm wearing a bit thin with yeah. it. For a free carnival race, that's a really good race, I'm under six runners. Yeah, it, it looks as though there's four genuine chances. Right. Anything else or you stick with two this week? I think that uh, slow hands uh, okay. might be the third one. Oh, so. throwing him in. Yeah. All right. Just need some luck. Oh, well, I'll get on the, on the Got A Kiss tram with you and we'll go Ren's Day to, to beat Shea Your Boss. You're in uh, love with him. Well, he's not let me down yet. Thanks, Bart. <laughs> mate. David Ellis has been one of New Zealand's most prominent bloodstock buyers for a number of decades. But Melody Bell will always hold a special place in his heart. This week, we caught up with the Tiakau Racing Principal to talk about the 14 times Group 1 winner and plans to have her swan song in the Doombin Cup. David, thanks for joining us. No problem. Uh, before we see her in Brisbane, she's got some business uh, in, in Sydney. She goes to the Tancred this weekend. Uh, 2,400 metres, at new territory for her? It very much is. She hasn't raced past 2,000 metres. Uh, so um, a race like the Doombin Cup is um, going to be right up her alley, but uh, the way she sees out 2,000 metres, um, her trainer, Jamie Richards, who's done a sensational job with her, he thinks she'll get 2,400 and he's right 99 times out of 100. <laughs> Uh, we have seen her here in Queensland before. She won the, the, the size, a Group 2 race here in her two-year-old year, so it's a full circle for us here in terms of seeing this magnificent man. Yeah, for sure. I think she won by four or five lengths, uh, the size produce, won it really convincingly, and um, that was on the back of winning the size produce Group 1 in New Zealand. Yep. Uh, so... Um, quite a remarkable story. She had her first race in end of September, early October as a two-year-old. She won that very convincingly. She won the Karaka Million, a million dollar race. She won the size produce and she's won races every year since as a two, three, four, five and now she's in career best form as a six-year-old. You've been a prominent buyer in New Zealand for a few decades now. Um, and you're fiercely loyal to New Zealand. Uh, I know that it gives you nothing more no, nothing more satisfying than you know, buying a horse there that, that can compete on that, that global scale, and but then retire to start in New Zealand and continue that, that circle for the local breeding industry. Absolutely. Uh, the New Zealand breeding industry, which only has about 3,000 foals a year, punches well above its weight on the international stage and in Australia, Singapore, Hong Kong, uh, all around the world, and um, I'm very proud to be part of it all for certain. Punters will be hoping Stephanie Thornton is in the winning list at Eagle Farm this weekend with a number of well-fancied rides. We spoke to her this week about those rides and also her role with the BRC over Stradbroke season. Well, Stephanie Thornton returns to Brisbane Racing on Saturday, having been in Sydney for the Group 1 Galaxy last week, and she's met with a very good book of rides, including one of her favourites, got a kiss. Um, she didn't win over the summer, Steph, but she raced so well this horse. Yeah, she did. She was as consistent as she's ever been and unfortunately just her racing pattern requires plenty of luck, which we didn't seem to get last prep. So hopefully, obviously being a, a very small field on Saturday, she won't need too much of it and she can be too good for them. You've been busy off the racetrack as well. You're a BRC ambassador for the carnival and you've been, uh, we've seen some some modelling shots of you, which which is easier, the, the modelling or the or the riding? Oh, look, I think I'm a lot more comfortable with the riding, that's <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but, um, no, it was, a, it was also a great experience for me doing that and obviously looking forward to being an ambassador for the BRC this winter. That's BRC TV for another week. We look forward to seeing you at the races this weekend, of course, complying with the BRC's COVID safe plan, and we wish everyone a happy Easter. Yeah.